Hi, um, I'm Karen Coney, Director of the Verilis Center for Art and Politics, a public research platform at the New School that investigates where, how, and to what effect political and aesthetic practices intersect. That, at least, is what we've been doing up to now. My profound thanks to the org organizers of this speak out, and now I'll provide a couple of thoughts on entitlement and why the core value driving my work is inclusiveness. Once before, in the days of after 9-11, New York City came together around ideals of diversity, openness and community, three terms that fall under the rubric of inclusiveness. Most New Yorkers at that time refused to succumb to fear-mongering advocated by some politicians, and as an immigrant who had arrived in New York City 15 years prior, it was then, for the first time, that I too felt entitled to join a political movement. The city had become my own because the very idea of inclusiveness was at stake. Action was called for to try to implement the notion that ethical standards are not an abstraction, they are a reality, both intimate and structural. A couple of years later, I became a citizen. This feeling of entitlement, this sense that I have not only the right, but the obligation to participate, the demand for immediate yet nuanced action is now back in the face of insidious, perverse, violent, and relentless attacks on what I care most about, which is inclusiveness. Only this time the threat is from within. But how does one nurture, practice, and sustain inclusiveness? So far at the Verily Center, we've considered the intersection of art and politics, and inclusiveness is pursued through strategies shared by many of you as well. Free admission, public convenings that are accessible in actual space and online, new models, modules of collective and shared learning, interdisciplinary approaches in order to dismantle hierarchies of knowledge and expertise, cheap publications, learning libraries, childcare, and more. So what is changing with the Trump presidency? The imminent, uh, the imminent assault on our civil liberties is of such magnitude that these strategies no longer seem sufficient. And I believe that if I want to remain effective and advance inclusiveness, I need to turn to art and declare art itself a political practice. Not because we can afford to turn our backs on traditional political structures, we need to be present there as well. But if we declare our artworks, our exhibitions, our critical discourse, our curatorial practice a political practice, we can meet the challenges of this incoming administration and of post-democracy in general much more effectively because inclusiveness will be implemented along a multitude of criteria. If we declare art a political practice, we can operate along different time frames simultaneously, pursuing immediate impact as well as long-term nurturing, such as education. If we declare art a political practice, we can spell out goals at different scales, from super or hyper-localized to global. We can define distinct and aligned sets of deliverables. If we focus on the formal qualities of art, as well as its literal material foundation, we can explore entirely new orders of an, exclusive of an inclusive political practice that can reach beyond the human. Defined as political projects, our artworks become the enactment of a new politics of inclusiveness for the next two years, maybe four. At the Verily Center, we will dedicate ourselves to art as politics. This is my pledge for upholding the value of inclusiveness. <laughs>